Hi, and welcome to Hammer's Hacks, brought to you by Gold Tip Arrows and V-Singer Stabilizers. I'm your host, Tim Gellingham, and on each episode, I'll give you a simple tip, something that you probably didn't even consider that will help you become a better archer in bow hunting. Hey, everybody. Tim Gellingham here. Here's another episode of Hammer's Hacks. These are just tips that, quick tips that are going to help you make a decision, you know, hopefully for the better for your, your archery and bow hunting uses. Now, Today, what I'm going to cover is something that I've used for years. Now, some of the reasons that I use it is because I have a very long draw length. What I'm talking about is an overdraw. Now, if you're a relatively new archer, you're probably uh, not real familiar with overdraws. I mean, overdraw is this bracket system here that allows me to bring the arrow rest further back. There, you know, therein allowing me to shoot a shorter arrow which is much stiffer um, and or allows me to run the weight in the front of the arrow rather than carried over the length of the arrow. So there are benefits to both. Now, one of the things that I personally struggle with with my draw length is getting an arrow stiff enough, okay? This is one of my hunting arrows. It's a 250 spine Pierce Tour. Um, if you look closely, I have a thorn glue-in broadhead. Now, in order to keep these arrows stiff enough, I got to try to limit the length of my arrow as much as possible. I will actually draw this arrow clear up tight to the arrow rest. And you see a lot of people, you know, drawing them out here in front of the riser. Now, that's more of a safety issue than anything. And you have to assess for yourself, you know, where you want to fall in regards to having a broadhead near your hand. You know, with a broadhead like this, there's really no safety issues. You do have a a, a plate here that kind of protects the arrow from, you know, getting down onto your hand. Um, I've really never had an issue whatsoever on that. But but again, that's a that's a personal comfort issue. So if you don't like that arrow anywhere near your hand, you know, keep in mind, you know, that's just an option. So, but what this shortening of the arrow does for me is that it really allows me to stiffen an arrow up so that I don't have to go to a heavier arrow. Now, my only other option in arrows at my draw length is to go to say a 200 spine kinetic chaos. Well, that jumps me from a 430 grain arrow, which I can shoot at 325 foot a second, up to about a 512 grain arrow, which now bumps my speed way down in, oh, probably around 300 foot per second. Um, and so it's just, you know, some people might think that's splitting hairs, but I like to build my setups around performance. I like speed in a hunting scenario. And so that's why I do it on my hunting bow. Also, you know, if I've got arrows, you know, in a quiver, I don't, you know, this arrow is 28 and a half inches. If I had a 33 and a half inch arrow, now you're looking at them hanging clear down here below your cam. You know, they're just more clunky, more noise, you know. You short draw link guys don't have to worry about that stuff too much. There's, you know, but but keep in mind, this is a Hamsky overdraw. If you look at the back side of it, um, I think it's the only one that I know of that's commercially available. Um, but I shoot Hamsky rests because frankly, I think they're the best on the market. But everything locks in and interlocks. Now, a lot of people will tell you that an overdraw is less forgiving. Okay, because it's sitting back there behind your hand, and that's not true. Okay, that is not true at all. Um, it is equally as bad to have your arrow rest clear forward and have your sight in the wrong position. Now, that's going to be another hammer's hack, another lesson. Uh, it's the thing we call torque tuning. When you torque a bow, you move the sight one way, then the arrow goes the other way. What we do when we torque tune is we try to find a position where the sight and the arrow arrow rest complement each other so basically they correct the they you find a sweet spot where those two motions are kind of canceling each other out so if you do have an overdraw on the bow the sight will need to go further back towards the riser just keep that in mind now on my target bows there is a big advantage in my opinion in 3d especially not necessarily in indoor not necessarily in target archery as long as you um, have arrows that are stiff enough but in a target arrow scenario if i'm shooting arrows out into the wind and i want to run 150 grain point i might find that very difficult on a very long arrow so by shortening them up on an overdraw it allows me to put more point weight in the, in the front it also allows me to take an arrow 
like this triple X and shoot it for 3D usage, okay? I have seen tournaments where the difference between a 30X and a triple X was 10 to 12 points. There are tournaments where it won't matter at all. But over the scope of the year and the shooter of the year races, I feel like shooting the biggest arrow that I possibly can gives me a little bit of an advantage, okay? So I always strive to shoot as big arrow as I can. Now, that means a lot of times I have to pull a little bit more poundage. I have to make concessions here or equipment setups, you know, that allow that. And one of the things that I do is run an overdraw. What an overdraw does is it allows me to cut that last two, two and a half inches of the arrow off. So that's another 20 grains that I can either put in the point or another seven foot a second I'm going to gain on, a, on average in my setup. So it kind of depends whether I'm shooting an ASA known class or an unknown class or an IBO class. That is what that's based off of what, you know, how I make those choices. So um, I hope this kind of helps you guys understand some of the things that I, that I do that might help you. Um, if you're a hunter or a target shooter, there are benefits to shooting an overdraw. Uh, a lot of you may not know they exist because you're not seeing them at your local pro shop, but they do exist. Um, this used to be back in the day before carbon arrows used to be extremely popular because aluminum arrows were extremely heavy. So heavy arrows, the only way you're going to get them short and fast was to shorten them up on an overdraw. So um, again, it's a rock solid setup, very trustworthy. I want a ton of tournaments shooting an overdraw and I shoot them on every single bow that I have. Uh, that's Hammer's Hacks for the week. Hope that helps and keep them in the middle. Hey, before you go, there's some great ways to keep getting even more info and tips. Subscribe to Gold Tip Archery Ops podcast to hear my conversation with top experts in archery and bow hunting. You can also check out Gold Tip on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening and always start tough, and stay true out there.